<clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Good time to clear my throat right now. <clears throat> yeah. Woo. Live <laughs> from the Vanguard Wine Cellar, where the wine is spelled with an H. Oh. Because one of their clients is asking them to vote on a director. Oh. Oh. It's an all new terrific Tuesday edition of Business Fans, joined by analyst hole Matt Mascardi. Woo! Hey, oh. On today's bacon dusted audit committee chairperson called October 1st, 2024, a dumb ESG news quiz. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> all right. I haven't had um, one of these in a while. We have not, but I. I do like the idea of a bacon-dusted audit committee chair. What, what happened to bacon-dusted? It kind of went away. I feel like the pandemic killed all the fun of life, including bacon-dusted things. Was that a thing, though? I, <laughs> yeah, I don't wasn't know it? where that was a Donuts thing. Donuts and, I don't know. Uh, I have never had a... I've had Life insurance on plans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> iPhone 24. All right. Our show today is being sponsored by FreeFlow Analytics, the only platform measuring board power connections and performance for free. This is no yeah. joke. Over 9,000 companies. How many directors? 20,000? 90. 90, 90,000. 90, and I use 90. this. I know some of you are thinking, boy, these people, these two are idiots and this show is frivolous. But really, actually, you're wrong. It's not. I use this Only database. My mom thinks that. I use this database constantly for research uh, to find all kinds of wonderful things. E even simple I things like tenure, uh, that, you know, age. It doesn't have to be all the complicated stuff. Can I ask you, um, does, it, does it undermine? No. The platform when you say I use it for research, <laughs> I don't <Is> know. That <laughs> you're honestly you're stupid not to use it. E even if you just do a little bit of light research on on equities, you want to okay, know you, the boards and it, you kind of done. It's, it's easy. It's really if, easy to use. If you've got a portfolio it's on really like Robinhood of like four stocks that your brother's uncle said were hot. You should just look up who runs these companies. I mean, it takes Everything four seconds well. and it's free. The search bar works well. It's quick. It's responsive. All right, come on. Let's get to the show. Let's do a quiz. Come on. All right, let's do a quiz. Do we want quiz music or what are we doing? What am I doing for you? Like, uh, uh, you can give me an intro. Uh, okay. Quiz let's intro music? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay <I> fine. <laughs> Here we go. So what I did, Matt, is I just picked... Picked six headlines from the past day. I think these are really the past day or two. And I'm going to ask you a series of questions. ESG questions. Mostly governance related, but questions about the, the companies they're talking about, the people they're talking about. Here, okay, let me start off yeah, give with me a this question. one. This is something we talked about in the past, and I think this is going to be your new favorite exchange, your new favorite stock exchange pretty soon. I have lots of favorite stock Te exchanges, yeah. Texas Stock Exchange moves closer to launch with leadership team and board. What? <laughs> Texas Governor Greg Abbott said on Monday, yesterday, that the exchange will ensure that businesses have access to capital and that market participants have more choice. Oh, I love that. Like, Sounds uh, very woke. Sounds very woke, Greg Abbott. <laughs> super Republicans love choice. Here we go. Let's, let's dive into the leadership team. I went right to the website. Uh, 22 people. 22 people on the leadership team. How many women, Matt? How many women on the Texas Ooh. Stock Exchange leadership team? 22 people. And before you guess, I, I'm... There are a lot of women in Texas. Uh, more than half, I think, actually. A lot of women in Texas. A lot I to want pick to preface from. this by saying... A lot saying, of great universities, too. I University know, of Texas, SMU, Rice. I, I, in pre-production, Damien said he was doing a quiz, so I avoided basically as much news as possible. I have not seen any of these. I don't know what's going on with any of these. How so, many women on the leadership is, team at the Texas Stock Exchange? Wow, what a question. I'm going to go with six. Six. <laughs> That's generous. <laughs> you're, you're, what? Yeah. Uh, Matt, there one. 
What? One woman. <laughs> One? Her, her name is Nicole Chambers, a Did single you know? woman on the leadership team at the Texas Truck. I mean, that's just, that's a mic drop moment, right, for that exchange? I mean, they're basically saying choice. who they are. This is who that's, we are. That's called choice is what that's yeah, called. Yeah, let's stay with that. Uh, how, many, how many people of color on the leadership team? How many people of color? Remember, this is Texas. Mean, Texas. This, is, this is not Maine. This is not Vermont. This is Texas. I actually, where, for, where white people are in the minority in Texas. Yes. I was doing a research project for a client where we were looking for man brand risk um, for these like DEI coward U-turn boards and their exposure to like states where the where there's like manliness quote on air quotes built mm-hmm. in. And I, I did not know that Texas was actually like only 37 percent white. I, it's actually majority non-white. So. Even if I ignored the demographic <laughs> demographics yeah. and said they skewed white, I am still. They have to have out of twenty two people, twenty two nine people. of them at least nine have to be again non-white. very generous. Uh, oh the, no! <laughs> the answer is one. Oh no! So this Tell me is it's not the woman. No, it's not the woman. It's a man named Harvey Cloyd. So this is the this is the anti DEI movement in action, right? This is the anti wow. ESG mo- movement personified the texas stock exchange congratulations for bringing america back to what 1841 is that where we are 1823 uh, uh, yeah <laughs> let's that should be the next question what yeah. year is texas do, in what do they wish it was <laughs> I, I, and i have to tell you something about harvey cloyd because it made me laugh harvey cloyd is only b- board service i'm not going to make you guess because it's on a place called the crenshaw christian center Oh, which is a no, mega no. church in Los Angeles. But I have to laugh at this because they sound a lot like Norfolk Southern because the Crenshaw <laughs> Christian Center is run by um, the Price family. It's just four Price members listed on the website. One of them is no longer living, so we're already we're down to three. Um, <laughs> two of them, Dr. Fred Price and Dr. Betty Price, um, they're called doctors, but they have honorary uh, doctors of divinity oh. degrees. Honorary. That's not a doctor. I'm sorry. That's not a doctor. No. Right? So it's it's like like I think actually what happens is you you go into a room and someone uses a sword and taps either shoulder <laughs> and says you are now sorry. a doctor. Uh, second of all, this is a mega church that was featured on um, the ABC News program 2020 about ministers who become really wealthy uh, by misusing their congregants' oh, money. Oh, That's, nice. Yeah. And then also, um, it, it, in 2017, Fred Price Jr. stepped down after eight years, essentially, as CEO, apologizing for serious personal misjudgments, which have, have affected my life and family. And the, cur- the church did not disclose uh, what those... What those uh, J- I mean, misjudgments were just to. like just like a, a publicly traded company, right? So this is, uh, and of course he came back as CEO. He's now back. So this is the perfect, I think, place for um, the only person of color to be on the board, right? It it Can acts we, just like a publicly traded company. It's perfect. But but that said. This yeah. is a stock exchange. This is a place. <laughs> hey, I'm just needs, saying, where, it's, it's good the, experience, right? It's a family regular, firm. <laughs> CEOs come and go for ethical reasons. Not, no one knows why. And the, people, and there are fake doctors in leadership. It's perfect. It's I'm Norfolk Southern. I'm just saying, Southern. like, your job is to oversee, <laughs> like, the legal and, you know, m- mechanics of trading stocks on an exchange. I'm not sure... That family-run mega church in Los Angeles is a qualifying characteristic. I don't know what our knowledge map says. Uh, let's get to the board guess. of the Texas Stock Exchange. Seven directors have been named so far. Seven directors. How many are white dudes? Seven directors. How many are white dudes? Yeah, white well, dudes. Well, we know there's only one woman, and we know there's only one person of color, and that's a dude. So that means there's 20 white dudes, right? Isn't that no, how, no, we're talking about just the board of directors now. Seven named board of directors. Seven. Oh, that's not the lead. Leadership team. Got it. Board How of many directors. White Seven, Seven board of directors. Oh, whew. Texas I mean, the Stock board, Exchange. Boards are different, right? Because they are. They are. The, they they tend to like 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 brownwash a board. The leadership team will be all white people, and then they throw in like a per, couple of people of color and a couple of women. So. I'm going to say out of seven, it's four white dudes. 
<laughs> no, Rob, you're you're way off on this and the Texas <laughs> oh, Stock no. Exchange. It's it's all white dudes, all what? seven. You but you're even. right. You're right. The demographics did change because this is whereas the leadership team is like what, like four percent women. This is a zero percent. So you're right. Oh, it that's change. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, all white dudes. How it many of these change. seven? How many of these seven white dudes are named Rick? Maybe this is an easier <laughs> question for you. <laughs> How many are named oh, Rick? No. Oh no! I, I actually I need to take some time with this question. I've gotten so <laughs> many of some of these wrong. Um, oh, how many are named Rick? Well, you wouldn't be asking the question if it was just one. Uh, Rick, I, you know, right? you don't know. You don't know. I, I don't know, but I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to say three. Oh, you're close. It's two. You're close. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> and let's finish off Texas Stock Exchange. How many of the Ricks on the Texas Stock Exchange board were the former governor of Texas and forgave the 2010 BP oil spill as an act of God that cannot be prevented? I'm going to go with one. Yeah, one of that's those one Rick Perry. I finally that's got former a Rick. governor Rick Perry. <laughs> I finally got uh, one right. What a genius. All right, wow. that's it. That's the Texas Stock Exchange. Let's move on to the next headline. For our big quiz. Uh, the headline is Major CVS Shareholder Plans Activist Push Will will Meet with Management. That's exciting. It's always exciting in our world because, uh, again, our data at freeflowanalytics.com has, has a lot of data that really will help all activist investors. It helps you target uh, maybe who you want to remove from the board, who you want to promote on the board, who, and maybe other directors you might want to add to the board. There's a lot you can do, activist investors, with our data. So here's the first question. True or false, the last appointed CVS director, Scott Kirby, who joined the board in October 2023, has expertise and experience relevant to CVS? That one is false. I believe Scott Kirby is the CEO or ex-CEO of like United Airlines. Very good. So exactly. I, I, You're yeah, right. That's I false. That's Well-known yeah. airline industry veteran <laughs> on, <laughs> on pharmacy. <laughs> what are we and, doing and here? What are we yeah. doing? I don't know. Uh, Matt, what percentage of board influence is tied up with directors over 70 years old with average tenure of more than a decade? This is a nerdy, very nerdy question. This is, yeah, you got, I like the first one with how many Ricks. This is, uh, this <laughs> is a little We're getting a little more different. serious now. Um, I'm going to go with 40%, 40%. Right, right on the nose, 40%. Yeah, yeah so I'm, uh, I'm only pointing this out because, again, for any, you know, clients, potential clients, people who just want to use the database, this right here is just like a, a great first target, right? You could open up almost half the board influence by targeting these directors for removal. Well, this is the, what they did at Southwest. So Elliot, when they moved into Southwest, the Southwest board, something like 60% of the influence was people over 75. And Easy. Easy including peasy. Including Gary Kelly, who'd been there since 1994. So this is like an easy way of saying, how far out of step are you with what this company actually does rather than just recycling your friends? Of so, those- yeah. Of those four directors, um, how many have relevant experience to the operations of CVS Healthcare? Oh, that's uh, my guess. Is, so CVS is one of those. We on the proxy countdown, we do yeah. this all the time. We find these like large, mature American companies that have you know board members that basically are all MBAs and finance people and mm -hmm. accountants, and then like nobody has relevant experience except for the CEO. So I'm gonna go with none. Very close. It's one. A man oh, named okay. Jean Pierre Mion, a former CEO at PCS PCS Health Systems, and a former exec at Eli Lilly. But the other three, a partner in a law firm, uh, the former CEO of Ralph Lauren, and uh, <laughs> the senior advisor of the TPG Climate Rise Fund. I don't know what that is. But okay. It's yeah. Not <laughs> I don't know why they're on the CVS board. <laughs> what are we doing? How, how many CVS directors, according to our data, are batting over 400 in earnings? Oh, wow. Uh, and there's 10 directors, you said? Um, uh, uh, or, or is it 12? Yeah, I think it's... Uh, I'm going to. I'm just going to make the answer three, no matter what. I'm going to say three. Yeah, I don't know. The, yeah, I should have written that down. I don't know how many directors there are. Um, I think it's about... You're right. They're about 12. It's only one, which is probably why they're a wow. target. They probably looked at our data. It's just Michael Mahoney, who, who actually just joined last year. He's hitting 503. Overall, the team is hitting 214 in earnings. So maybe they did look at our data. 503 did. is like... Yeah. Squarely average. Middling. 500 Middling. is the averagest average. Mediocre. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah, overall, they're hitting 214. So, uh, 
when was the last year that investors even noticed the board at CVS, Matt? When did when oh. the last time they even cared? Um, hmm. It's a weird question. It is a weird question. <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that. Not very that. well worded either. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to say 2017. I don't yeah, know. You're, whatever, you're close. 2020 was the last year a director uh, received a vote even greater than 8% votes against. So they, investors, 8%? Really? Investors don't even seem attention? to notice. No, they don't yeah, seem they, to notice. They, and, then, and maybe this is why suddenly an activist investor comes in and is now... It making you sweat a little bit, right? You Can should we notice. talk about this recurring pattern that like no one cares about directors until an activist swoops in and then all of a sudden everybody, everybody has strong cares, opinions. Right? Everyone cares <laughs> then. And it's like you know you can care before the activist. Well, you actually have decades to care before an activist shows up. For those of you who went to public school, it's a little bit like when you know, when the principal walks in the room to observe the class and the teacher and then suddenly all, all the kids are sitting all upright, the kids right are <laughs> it's really like, what good the fuck? Yeah. yeah and finally on which day of the fiscal calendar uh would cv C, cvs ceo karen lynch earn pay equal to the median compensation of ceo workers we, we covered this on, on proxy countdown is that her realized pay or is that her this is just total comp. summary comp yeah. summary comp oh, this is well, the, this is it's the a figure little bit longer it's like an extra day or two this, this is the figure released by the company itself in their proxy i'm statement. gonna go with day 12. oh you're 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 off um her uh, actually it happens on the first day of the fiscal calendar first day <laughs> what? her rate 392 to one is that ratio so there's a woman who might be worried about her job if activists are getting involved. One day you make as much as one a, day. Well, the, actually, to be fair, Matt, it's, it's, it's less than a day. To be fair. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. She like could clock hours. out around like uh, two p.m. and she's made as much as the median worker there at CVS. That's not bad. That's all not right. Bad. That's CVS Healthcare. Let's move on to the next headline. Uh, all right. Charles Schwab. You, you got some music for me, Charles yeah, Schwab? Yeah, I'm gonna go back to this. Intense yeah, it's the right music, music for like this company. It's, it's intense. Char a lot of headlines today uh, about this story. Charles Schwab, CEO, Walt Bettinger to retire at end of 2024. Rick Worster to replace him. That's big news, right? That's, that's CEO Charles Schwab stepping down. This sounds fine. A lot of headlines. A lot of headlines. Yeah, know, but Matt, who is the true leader of the Charles Schwab yeah, Corporation? Yeah, it's a Schwab. Isn't it Charles <laughs> Schwab who's it's on the board? It's Charles Schwab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah, he's on the board. Um, so he's the founder. He's the former CEO, and he holds 6% of shares, which in a in a, in a a single, uh, a non-dual class share company, that's a lot. That's a significant that's a amount. Yeah. Yeah. According How much to our, does he have, according uh, to us? Yeah. There you go. That's the next question. According to our data, available only at freeflowanalytics.com, what is the actual influence of said Charles Schwab? Oh, well, he checks some boxes, and seeing as he I checks know a lot how of boxes. the data, um, yeah. I'm going to say how that data works. I'm going to say 66 Six percent. Yeah, it's basically correct. Sixty-four percent. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's, that sounds right. So um, I don't know why the headline. The headlines seem to be missing the real power structure. I of like. Charles I Schwab. like a good misleading headline. Like <laughs> a guy chosen by founder replaced by other guy chosen by founder. I like that. That that doesn't read as well. So with that said, who is truly second in command after Charles Schwab? Is it retiring CEO Walt Bettinger or future CEO Rick Worster? Well, that question depends on whether or not Walt Bettinger will be on will stay on the board after he retires as like executive chair for a little while uh, in that make believe position, um, because then he would truly be second in command. I like where you're going. Um, uh, I'm gonna say Bettinger. Bettinger is gonna stay second in command. He's gonna uh, stick around for a little I'm while. I'm sorry, this was a trick question. It's actually Charles Schwab's daughter and former executive, <laughs> Carolyn Schwab Pomerantz, who is currently on the board of the oh, Charles Schwab Corp man. Corporation. Oh, I'm yeah. so close. Though. I have the I have the feeling that she has a very close relationship with the founder. And uh, uh, former CEO Charles Schwab. What I mean, what a world! <laughs> what a world! Like the, the headlines covering this are just so kind of missing the bigger believe. point. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. How about this? What percentage of board influence is held by women who are not related to Charles Schwab? This is according to our uh, data. That one's easier because if I know that. Um, Schwab Pomerantz and Charles Schwab owns 64%. Yeah, and, right. and she's going to own probably another 12% on her own. That means you're talking about, you know, 75 ish percent mm -hmm. is owned by 
two people who are both named Schwab, and then you probably got a board that's really 50-50 split, um, but you've only got 25%-ish of influence. To, I'm yep. going to say uh, eight. Eight hey, percent. Very good. It's nine. Nine percent yeah, spread over go. four there women. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. There you go. Sorry. And finally, for this Charles Schwab headline, new CEO taking over, how many, how many executive chairs Ooh. does it take to oversee the Charles Schwab board? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, Charles is an Charles is one of them, yeah. One. He's definitely um, one. I, and and then I, I my guess is Walt Bettinger's probably yes. going to be there too, right? Yeah, so, exactly so right. Two, I'm going to uh, two, 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 executive yeah, chairs. exactly yeah, right. That's right. I know why, why? Why do we need that? Both of them <laughs> are among the top five paid uh, named executive officers. Well, what? Why do we need this? Why do we need even, two executive chairs? Even Walt being called executive chair, are we just? Are we kidding? What are we with doing? This? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> there's only one executive chair. It's the guy who owns six percent of the stock and founded the company. There's yeah, no other. I was looking at the 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 compensation policy at the company and uh, basically Charles Schwab is involved with all decisions like he yeah, he obviously. has the right to <laughs> he, he he sets the pay for himself and for everybody else like he's involved in all the decisions everywhere I mean but this, this, is, this like, is not a controlled company though it's not like, technically the, allowed the headline like for a throwback it would be like Smithers takes over a nuclear power plant while <laughs> Monty Burns stays on board like it's not it doesn't it's not a real thing all right uh, let's move on yeah, I this like moving next on. Next couple moving are on fun ones. Next thing. couple are okay. fun ones. Fill in the date. Okay? I'm going to read the headline. You, I took out the date. You fill it in. Fill in the date. Volkswagen ex-boss Martin Wintercorn has has Dieselgate trials suspended until when due to ill health? Oh, man. I can't believe that we waited 12, what, 12 <laughs> years for this Well, that's the next question. That's the next trial question. Trial and... Like as soon as they announce the trial, he falls <laughs> ill, and they have to postpone mm -hmm. it. Um, it's Ill life's health. a joke. Uh, I'm gonna guess February seventh, twenty twenty eight. Yeah, that's the funny answer. It's actually twenty twenty five. We have to wait Aww. till twenty twenty five. And and you referenced this. What year did Volkswagen admit to installing software to rig emissions levels in millions of diesel vehicles worldwide? I believe what it was year was 2011. that? I believe it was, it was like September uh, twenty eleven. You know, you might be right there. about that. The year they have written down here that they admitted it was twenty fifteen, but I thought it was before that. That's what I this think article like says. The investigation started like mm -hmm. three or four years prior to. Either like way, it's been at least a decade, and we have to keep waiting. Okay. Yay! Yeah. And okay, finally, they reference ill health, right? That they post, they're postponing this several months, right? What is the ill health that has caused oh, no. an, a suspension of the trial? What is this this mysterious ill health that he can't go to court? Uh, I th doesn't he have an allergy to justice? Isn't that what it is? He, al he also must have an allergy to Zoom, right? I don't know why they couldn't set up a Zoom in his home office. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's something like you know, like his pinky fingers arthritic. What is it? Uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to give you the correct answer on that one. Listen to this. Listen to the reason why they postponed this. Winter corn recently slipped in the shower and broke his right leg. What? What the? What are we doing? What are we doing? Germany, what are you doing? You know that they have like <laughs> ways that when you break a bone, it's called you can elevators. Still move around, you get <laughs> put him in the elevator. Uh, all right, that's it for the Volkswagen story. Justice, I guess, never going to be served. Is that, is that where we're be served right? in twenty thirty? Uh, next one, spot the error in this headline. This one's very simple. Spot Ooh, I, the I, error in this headline. Okay, I like this. Elon Musk's nonprofit uh, settles labor board case for $450,000. I'll repeat that. Uh, spot the error. Elon Musk's nonprofit settles labor board case for $450,000. Wow. This is hard. Okay. Um, because it could arguably not be actually Elon Musk's nonprofit. Could be one but more likely, it's not really a nonprofit. It's some, <laughs> could, some uh, yeah, way that he funnels profit that. to something else. And a labor board case, it may not be it at all either. Um, $450,000 is probably the only thing that's true in that. Um, I'm going to go with it's not a nonprofit. 
Oh, sorry. You, but you were on to <sighs> something there. The, the right answer is it's Kimball Musk's nonprofit. <laughs> like brother, like brother. <laughs> They're both horrible uh, people involved with the National Labor Board. So his nonprofit, Big Green, is paying this fine because they fired 10 workers because they were trying to unionize. Just like his brother. Wow. It's beautiful. Wow. I just love that Kimball Musk is in the news. He's actually in the news twice this week because... Uh, they're, they're, they found old an old video where Kimball Musk admitted that he and Elon uh, were here in America illegally. They were illegal oh. citizens for quite a bit of time as they while they were living here and forming companies. And this is this came out because of course Elon Musk hates every yes. he, every true. illegal whatever he wants. I don't know what he's calling these people illegal citizens illegal. I don't know what his term is. In fact, he thinks that. Uh, they're flying illegals to swing states yeah, to that vote for post. Kamala Harris. And he also said that if you don't vote for Trump, there will never be an election again because if Kamala wins, our democracy is over. And th- I'm just saying, this is Kimball. And the, and I'm, I'm just excited because Kimball Musk in the news twice this week, twice. Uh, there, I don't. I'm not excited. Both about for any, great reasons. Any, Both any for great Musk reasons. in the news. I'm not. All right, excited let's move about. on quickly. Final question on our big quiz for October oh, wow. 1st, 2024. Wow, this is the best way to. This is the best question because it's final. <laughs> Another departing CEO, Weight Watchers CEO, is suddenly out of a job. That's the headline. Suddenly. Uh, th- you're not going to know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What is the name uh, of of the, the departing CEO? And by the way, it's not Weight Watchers. It, the company is actually called WW International, but whatever. Uh, um, it's like Seamy something. Isn't wow, it? Um, I'm going to give you a correct answer right there. Yeah, I, it's Seema Sistani. Name. That's incredible. Seema Sistani. You have yeah. a great memory, Seema Sistani. Name two reasons why Seema might be quote unquote suddenly out of a job. You think of two reasons? Uh, I mean, it's Weight Watchers. So, like, if she, uh, this sounds crass, but if she gained weight with the board fire, <laughs> that's I a don't dark actually answer. Know. Yeah, a I don't. Answer. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that the the fact that it's basically a penny stock. That's at this no, point That's the right is, answer. That's number one. Yeah, that's is a one reason. The share price is down to eighty four cents it, uh, from forty dollars in twenty twenty one, and about ten dollars when she took over. So she was already. Taking over kind of a glass cliff scenario there. It was well, a terrible the second company. reason is obviously Ozempic. It's like yes, uh, yeah, give yeah, yourself another yeah, crazy. Now listen to this. Uh, I I had to conclude this because it made me laugh. Uh, because when she took over, she sent Weight Watchers in a new direction, uh, acknowledging that weight loss isn't necessarily a matter of willpower by acquiring a telehealth company that markets anti-obesity drugs. I mean. I got to laugh at that. You have a company, Weight Watchers, and you're basically telling people that it doesn't really matter what you what you eat. Yeah, well, when like you have power, Ozempic, that's what uh, that's what she's saying, yeah, right? Like, yeah, kind of I'm surprised laugh. they didn't pivot dramatically to be a lifestyle, a health lifestyle company or something like that, right? Um, they changed the name Weight Watchers, I think, because because of that decision, because of like the the advent of. Ozempic and Wagovi and all those drugs. Uh, before she left the board, how many of Weight Watchers' nine directors were women? Now, I know you're going to channel Ooh. the Texas Stock Exchange here. You're going to might get confused. No, this how has many were be women? the opposite, right? Like, isn't was isn't their thing like their core demographic that they're, uh, which is a little ridiculous because it's well, weight isn't specific to a gender, but no. their core demographic was women. So. And I know they had Oprah on their board yes, for until, a long time. until May 2024, yes. Um, so I'm going to guess, I, I, it's, you said nine directors, so yeah. I'm going to guess five women. Yes, right on the nose. A yeah. majority women, yeah. But, and it's funny that you say that. You're setting the demographic, but that doesn't have any effect over most of the companies in our database. They don't care about the, the customers or, their, or the stakeholders when they, right? I mean, no, the Texas know, Stock but- Exchange as an example. But uh, but I do think that um, there's a certain authenticity that goes with a company like this, like you know, like they right. try to stay true to their demographic, so or what to, they perceive their demographic to be, I should say. According to our data, SEMA is stepping down with 28 percent of board influence, um, but the next three highest uh, are all men with an aggregate 42 percent influence. So, given that information, according to our data, who do you suspect? 
is the interim CEO? Is it a man or a glass cliff woman? It's definitely a glass cliff woman. It's yes, never yeah, anything yes. else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a woman named who they actually got a woman from the board, Tara Comonte. And let me ask you this final question of the quiz for October 1st, 2024. Probably my favorite question of the whole quiz. Uh, the interim CEO of Weight Watchers. I'm going to repeat that. The interim CEO of Weight Watchers was formerly the CFO at which company? Ooh, okay. So you're giving me a clue by emphasizing <laughs> I, the word weight. I like this. I just like this. <laughs> it tickled me. But... but uh oh man um i i'm gonna go with i don't know boeing oh well you're going in a different direction but the answer is shake shack wow <laughs> really yeah. seriously shake shack yeah that's, that's a right. real which thing? i which is delicious i love a I love a juicy high caloric bur- cheeseburger at shake shack it's 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 wonderful it's probably that, your all your your entire day's calories though i'm just gonna warn you add the shake add the delicious shake and fries um you're probably into like day three you're, you're already have, you've already earned you've already eaten like the the median calories for three of your workers for the entire year if you've had that, that can't delicious be real. cheeseburger that's not real is yes it, it is like- tara tara Comonte. <laughs> yes absolutely that's, <laughs> that's the worst thing i've that's ever that's it heard. that's the quiz that is your Hazelnut Rollis, and I am your analyst. Holden. That's a great way to get your ESG news, by the way. Honestly, we I don't know why we don't do this every week. Um, we'll be back again. We actually, I, this week's weird, because Dave is going to be gone for the end of the week. We're going to do a duty. I have my civic duty, yeah. Next week, um, we might have a wrap-up show on Friday. We might you should. Not. You should find you, some. You should. Find I'm going to try to get it together i'm gonna to try to if you want to be a special guest yeah, on i was gonna the say show, call up call somebody send me an email hit me on yeah. linkedin 1-800 you wish i think our number is 1-800 we are going to do like a guest appearance if we can put it together a guest appearance short notice guest appearance for friday's show where we wrap the week now you gotta be okay calling people assholes and rating stories all you need all you need is a pulse and a microphone okay. well let's can we set the bar, bar slightly higher than that? Like, <laughs> just a little bit. A beating That's pulse. A beating got. pulse. It's, until then, goodbye. Goodbye.